That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? Like, how, like, were they, like, how hard was it, like, me like memorizing, like, all the, like, visual, like, information, like, the muscles and all of that kind of stuff, since I don't have any vision at all, like, was it hard, like, getting the, like, the muscles and the bones and, like, all of that kind of stuff, like, how did they, like, teach that to you? Did they just do kind of, like, um... Like relative, like did they just kind of like show it to you, like where it is on you, or like did your school have like mannequins that they could like show it to you on? Like how they do like that um, part of the like anatomy and like physiology. Great question. Um, my best qu uh, answer for that is, is preference. Everyone is different. Everyone learns different. Uh learning uh perception and, and, and taking in knowledge is very individualized so if it would work better for you for people to demonstrate on you then that that's the best course of action if, if you prefer to work with like a skeleton mannequin um i i would say do both um as far as anatomy goes as far as technique and learning different uh strokes and, and rhythmic uh motions and things like that when when you get into more of the different types of massage definitely let them perform things on you and if you ever need extra practice um you know either during school time or some, some schools do after after school sessions and whatnot definitely get practice on other classmates or or ask family and friends because they'll be more than uh willing to to let you practice on them so um Unfortunately, I had a very, I wouldn't say terrible, um, I could have took more of an initiative as far as getting extra practice with anatomy, but they weren't very, uh, I would say, helpful as far as uh, teaching it to me. It, it, it is more of a, a memory thing because it is so complex and it, it, I'm sure it's a lot easier to learn with sight. So. Um, as far as that, just stay on uh, stay on your P's and Q's as far as getting extra help if you need it. That's my biggest thing. Um, <clears throat> I was a lot shy, more shy then than I am now. I'm a lot more outspoken and you will learn to, to be more verbal um, with that type of career. Because there will be times where you can be as independent as all get out, but there will be times where you need help and Back then, I wasn't very vocal about needing help. Sometimes I would just be like, you know, I'll figure it out on my own. So, okay. uh, as far as anatomy, that's my biggest thing. Definitely practice on people. Um, and reiterate is the biggest thing. Repetition, repetition will will get you adjusted because it, it's a lot of knowledge to take in, and it's not that it's hard. It's just very complex, and it's so much because there are what. I don't want to quote you wrong. Six hundred and like twenty, thirty bones and two hundred five muscles. So it is very complex, and uh, there's no way of getting around it um, because it, it's on the licensing exam. So you have to be you have to become proficient in it, unfortunately. And uh, I would say find find your niche because massage therapy is a, a diverse. Uh, career so find your niche whether you like the more clinical aspect which is the medical side or if you like the spa and and sugar scrubs and and hot stones and things like that so find your niche find what works for you because they will teach it all to you but some stuff you will really really like and cling to and stuff stuff you want you want so find your niche with that and, and okay. find also find uh analogies when you go through anatomy find stuff that, that even if it's the stupidest stuff, find stuff that, that that'll stick in your brain and make you help you remember it because there will be a lot of stuff that you can you know make up your own thing to if it makes sense for you okay all right great i know there was a lot 
Uh, go ahead, Emily. I have another question. Um, I and mean, then have you like what's your tips for the? You said you haven't found the right combination, but like, what are your tips for like the license? Have you taken the licensing exam yet? And like, what are your tips for like getting like licensed and all of that stuff? Uh, study, study, study. One, um, two. Get practice with people. Uh, if you can bring home print copies of, um, like some of your practice tests and things like that, just get practice with people reading it to you because I, I'm I'm a reader. I like my braille and I like to read on my own. So it's very strenuous for someone to have you on a timed computer reading a hundred questions to you over and over again. It it. it it's stressful and it's very annoying. I've taken it and I feel like one the, the main two reasons I didn't pass is because back then I wasn't as proficient with my anatomy and also just the test anxiety of somebody reading questions to you when you, you're completely capable of reading them on your own. So definitely get used to people reading for you. I mean, it, it's unfortunate. I kind of want to go in and and ask uh, Pearson View, which is the, uh, the testing center, about hooking braille devices to the computer because they their policy is not to use personal devices like bring anything of your own to your test but if i could hook up my braille display i feel like that would help me so yeah okay, people so... reading to you unless they make a change with that but if i could have oh. a, a i guess i don't want to say a mob because that's violent but if i could have a lot of people come with me you know and put that force on them as far as the accommodations of extended time and test read a lot. I don't feel like it's good enough. So if I could have people, you know, come behind me with that, it would make a difference. Okay. Go ahead, Amy. Okay, so that's like the accommodations you get is like extended time and like test read, like allowed for, or, or like what accommodations do you get for the licensing exam? Yeah, that's, all, like you a get. Screen that's all you get. That's all you get. Test read allowed, test read allowed, extended <laughs> time. Nope, oh. that's about a lot of extended time and recorded answers, which which they just click the answers for you and, and submit it for you. Um, oh, but that's okay. it. Oh, okay. man. Yeah, I feel like they should. I mean, that's, I wish they would let you have a Braille display or let you have that option, but. All right, any more questions? That's all I have. That's all I can think of. You sure? Um. So now, what, what do you feel about? Uh, I hope that doesn't uh, uh, discourage you at any. At any. No, uh, I mean it doesn't discourage me. I wish they would, but that's basically how um, we would do tests. Because um, I was in traditional college for a little bit, and I kind of ran into the same thing. Like traditional college, at least right now, especially with the um, with coronavirus, with everything being online, really wasn't the right situation for me. Um, and I feel like I need that smaller classroom setting as well. So that's why another reason why I'm, I forgot to mention earlier why I'm looking into massage therapy. So, um, so, but I feel like that doesn't discourage me too, too much because that's all like whenever I went to um, college, like traditional, I guess, quote unquote, traditional college, that's how they would um, do testing for me as well. They, would let me um, have um, his arm, the embosser broke and they were trying to get it fixed. But while the embosser was broken, I just had to use JAWS on the computer. So I've had to take a couple tests with just JAWS, which is a screen reading software for the sighted viewers out there on um, the computer. So I have some practice um, with that. So. I'd be prepared if it came to that, and if they haven't fixed that by the time I would take the licensing. Okay, great. Well, Chris, do you have any more you want to add before we conclude? Um, I didn't talk about textbooks, so uh, I'm not sure what schools you're looking into, but they will most likely not be able to get a Braille Anatomy textbook, which is a beast. It's a killer, and um. I think that would have helped me having diagrams, but those books are very expensive and they're also very hard to come across with actual quality. So um, I wanted to reach out to uh, LIMC 
at uh, the school for the visually impaired and see if they had anything, but I, I never got around to it. So if you could look into getting actual diagrams, I think that would help. And as far as the, the regular book with, you know, just text and whatnot, make sure that they send you either a folder or a zip with all the chapters individually. So you don't have to navigate through a whole book in one document because that that will be a headache. Um, but other than that, you just once you get proficient with the terminology, um, especially in anatomy, everything is directional. So once you learn the directional terms, you can just kind of piece the puzzle together in your head. Um, it's not as visual as a lot of people think, but my point is that I think it would be a lot more to uh, a lot easier to understand and break down with sight, you know, because you have you have the, the terminology and, and the pictures in front of you and we don't have that advantage. So, but other than that, it's a great field. Um, don't get discouraged. You will have, you know, bumps, but as long as the school works with you, then you, you, sh you you'll be fine. You'll, you'll do fine. You'll be fine. It's not hard. I mean, more of it is common sense than not. Um, only thing you'll really be learning is the, the ethics and boundaries and anatomy and uh, the different types of massage and they will if you you have a good therapist as an instructor um they will take uh teach you some good techniques and whatnot and if you ever need any anybody to practice on i mean we're in the same state so we can make something happen or if you need you know one-on-one -on -one instruction or, or help then i'll be more than willing to work with you great great i appreciate that visually impaired people helping out each other so with that being said emily uh, I want to first of all, for, I know you probably have a little thing you want to say or anything. Thank you for coming on the show, Third Eye Visions. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you again, the name of your YouTube channel, and, and I'm going to put it in the uh, description. Um, uh, you can find me here on YouTube at Emily's Journey with Blindness, and I post a lot. Um, I try to post um, every day or at least every other day, so you can find me here on YouTube, on Instagram. Facebook and Twitter, but I don't post as much on the others, but I mainly post here on YouTube. So subscribe to my YouTube channel at Emily's Journey with Blindness. Emily's Journey with Blindness. Y'all support this, man. I'll tell you, blind people make it happen. And again, Christy, I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to have your time to come and talk to Emily about your uh, massage uh, experience, massage therapy experience. And um Hope to see you soon again. And uh, if there's anything else I can do for both of y'all, y'all let me know. With that being said, I want to sign off from Third High Visions, where we, again, motivate the blind, stimulate your mind, and welcome all kind. <laughs>